let's look at the uh, flow state aware transport once again for QS provisioning. Uh, in order to implement the FSA based uh, uh, transport, which complies to certain QS requirements, uh, there are going to be a bunch of uh, network elements that we have briefly seen, protocols, uh, operations, and some, some interesting algorithms, which are all going to work together to realize uh, the transport of the flow state aware uh, traffic. Uh, let's start with the flow identity, followed by the bandwidth management, and we just recap the flow aggregate that we already know. So flow identity is basically the identification of an individual flow. Uh, the support is available in IP networks, both for IP version 4 and IP version 6. Uh, specifically, IP version 6 provides flow label. Uh, it's, it's an octet uh, in, available in the IP header. Uh, it is joined together or it is concatenated with the source and destination uh, IP addresses, um, uh, which can help this flow to be identified. And this is then stored in the um, uh, flow aggregate table. For IP version 4 uh, based networks, which is the uh, dominant case uh, anyways on the internet, uh, the IP addresses and the port numbers are utilized. Uh, for uh, voice over IP, multimedia traffic and uh, IPTV, uh, using uh, uh, session in initiation protocol uh, set of uh, or suite of services like uh, SC, uh, uh, there is an identification of the endpoint through which a flow is identified. Uh, then we have the uh, next important thing that is uh, what possible algorithms are can be implemented to perform bandwidth management. It is again a very important requirement for QS provisioning. So uh, bandwidth allocation is basically a policy issue that is uh, uh, who gets to have what uh, bandwidth. This is implemented uh, predominantly through explicit means or through uh, implicit means. Uh, through explicit means, we have uh, uh, the uh, well-known uh, scheduling disciplines such as FIFO for best effort. FIFO actually means uh, no specialized priority. Uh, whatever comes in or reaches the uh, input buffer of a router, gets uh, corresponding uh, treatment accordingly. Uh, but if you want to provide QoS for multimedia traffic, then weighted fair queuing is, uh, is utilized where weighted coefficients uh, are assigned to different flows, which uh, in turn are going to be uh, treated uh, differently by the um, input queue of the uh, router or a switch. Well, uh, this is what we call the more explicit uh, kind of uh, uh, bandwidth management by the network elements. For more implicit or tacit kind of uh, uh, bandwidth uh, management, we have priority scheduling. Uh, when we say why it is implicit is because of the fact that uh, when we talk about uh, priority, a priority is a relative term. So it means when multiple competing flows are going to be there, uh, then one of them would have a higher priority over the other. But if there is no competition as such, or if the flows actually belong to the same priority, uh, then uh, this uh, bandwidth allocation becomes more of a best effort kind of response. Uh, then we have the uh, flow aggregate. We already know that uh, flow aggregate is a bundle of uh, flows. Uh, these flows actually should correspond to the same QS requirements. So it means the flow aggregate has to be uh, one for certain kind of flows with the same QS requirements and has to be other for, uh, for a differing uh, bundle of uh, uh, flows. Uh, now each flow aggregate basically is uh, identified by several parameters. Uh, the most obvious one is uh, the flow aggregate identifier uh, that is a label switched path. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a label which is assigned to a certain flow in MPLS networks. Uh, this is basically the most obvious one. Uh, this, on the basis of this parameter value, the uh, flows can be treated. But uh, more uh, interesting features which are of concern to network designers are the first one being the label switched path itself. Uh, 
then the actual number of flows which are going to be in a given uh, flow aggregate because uh, is it going to be an indefinite um, indefinitely large aggregate or it is going to be limited then the uh, ratio of the maximum packet length and minimum link capacity this is a very important consideration to form the flow aggregate because uh, uh, sometimes uh, there are certain flows within a flow aggregate which would be sending traffic with very long uh, packets and there would be some which would have very short packets and average packets but the main concern or the trouble comes from the maximum length packets uh, and uh, this problem becomes uh, very obvious when this flow aggregate has to traverse across uh, a number of uh, intermediate networks each network uh, would have its own link capacity so an interesting uh, feature of a flow aggregate is going to be uh, a ratio of the maximum packet length and the minimum link capacity uh, this is going to be calculated for all the uh, links then the number of hops within an aggregation region that is uh, uh, it is the intra region uh, hop uh, then the maximum number of aggregation regions which would be connected uh, to provide an end to end flow or uh, to handle the flow aggregates so it is important to uh, consider these while uh, uh, defining the scope of the flow aggregate now mapping of a flow id an individual flow id to a flow aggregate is again dependent on certain other interesting parameters that is the maximum sum of sustainable transfer rates for all flows is going to be very important that is uh, uh, what is going to be the resultant size of the flow aggregate uh, after including all the flows and each flow is going to operate at its peak so it means this flow aggregate is going to be a heavy flow aggregate then likewise maximum sum of sustainable burst sizes now there is an average maximum uh, transfer rate for every flow then each flow can also have a burst temporarily so uh, is this flow aggregate going to sustain that are the network elements going to accommodate such a flow aggregate into their uh, network then what is the discard policy and what is the scheduling policy of the uh, service providers uh, and what are the service classes which are offered by the service provider because the service provider uh, may be providing uh, only some or uh, in an ideal case all of the services which the flow aggregate contains uh, the operator policies are eventually going to be the final say or the final word uh, of course uh, each uh, individual operator is also connected to other operators so an inter operator agreement is also going to have a final impact on how exactly an individual flow can be mapped or into the flow aggregate so this is again the same figure that we have seen the flow aggregate information has to be shared or disseminated between the network elements through the information exchange functional entity otherwise uh, when a flow aggregate is finally admitted into the network and if the network elements are not correspondingly uh, geared to achieve the quality of service for the flow aggregate then um, some network degraded performance would be experienced